I'm happy to welcome you to this, uh, what was going to be a little session uh, among friends, and now it's uh, quite, a, quite a few uh, have signed up, and I'm delighted that you did. Uh, today is going to be pretty quickly paced. We're going to do, uh, uh, what is it, six this morning and five this afternoon. Uh, each, each speaker will take about a half an hour. I'm already using my time, so I'll be quick. But first of all, I want to thank Greg Manifold and the Washington Post for setting this up in this space. Uh, they had some, uh, some interesting, I don't know if it was uh, rain leak or plumbing issues, but they had, uh, had to scrape the room and, and uh, along with it the old uh, AV equipment. So we're, we're kind of improvising a little bit, so bear with me on, uh, on transitions and such things. But uh, I think it'll work. Um, the uh, St Stephen Comives and the S&D have been extremely supportive in trying to get this idea uh, going. Uh, actually, last year, Sarah Quinn's proposed, why don't we do a track on type? And uh, they got me into it. And I didn't have anybody say no who I wanted to speak. So we have a really great line of speakers. Um, so I will, will not say too much about it. But the whole, the whole idea of this is to look at type in, in, in news publications from different directions. We're not, uh, we're not trying to be, uh, we're not trying to tell you that there's any solution or any one solution, but show you all the things that we're thinking about. There's going to be some background, some very technical stuff, and uh, some, some actual work uh, in the field. So I think you'll get a nice cross-section of what's going on and get a better sense of the history and shape and direction of news typography going forward. So um, with that, let me see how I can do this. You get to see my desktop, which I very carefully cleaned up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just another. Ha, easy. This is a cue for me to thank the sponsors, which I'm happy to start with the Font Bureau, but also uh, Microsoft and Heffler uh, type, have, or Heffler and Company now. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's, it's great that they did because we were able to bring some speakers from overseas and, uh, and get all the all stuff taken care, of, taken care of. So thank you very much. So uh, what I'm going to talk about is the actual uh, way we read modern publications. Uh, it's, I'm not going to get too much into the nitty gritty or even the style of typography, uh, but more uh, more talk. More I'll t uh, talk about what what we're thinking, what's going on, and what's wrong, and then try to challenge you as as, as a designer to think about what should we be doing, what's what what uh, how could we fix this? Because there's some some fairly uh, big issues here. Um, the the main thing is the the habit of reading news publications, and I've worked for quite a lot of them, uh, and it's, it's it's sort of you know the assumption is when you're when you're start working or when you're a kid, is that the, the way things are are the way they're supposed to be. And so many of us think of a newspaper in a newsroom or a news weekly in a certain way. And it's, and it's sort of demoralizing or strange that it's changing. Now, I don't know why human beings tend to think this way, because everything changes all the time. And the newspaper as a modern institution is, is only about 100 years old. It's, we're not talking about you know, uh, something like, like boiled rice or some other human cultural artifact that's been with us for a long time. Uh, it, this is fairly new. And it, it developed very rapidly and changed enormously in the time that, uh, during its peak. Uh, the question is, does it, does it go away now? And I believe that, that, that there's a lot of challenge but, but there's still a lot of reason for news publications that people want, can use them if they're done right. Um, Richard Gingras, who is the, uh, now the editor of Google News, who may be regarded as the enemy by some here, but uh, Gingras was working at At Home Network in 1995, when, which was a, 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 an early broadband kind of AOL effort. And his view was that in online, the narrative is with the reader, with the user. Uh, it's not you presenting your narrative, but the, but the user uh, 
but the user's narrative in stitching together uh, bits of fact, information, pictures for their story. And I think that's, that's a pretty good point. Most of us resisted that in the beginning. And uh, most of us as designers like the idea of a page and then designing stuff that fits in this <coughs> format. And we always, you know, when I was designing, uh, redesigning a paper, I would always start with the, the trim and the grid and the gutters and the column system. That would be always the first. But now it doesn't really work that way. Now I start with kind of a random column width, 500 pixels or whatever, and then um, figure out what are the relationships of type, uh, headlines, subheads, decks, text. Um, so, so it's really changing. And the reason why the, the, the new standards, actually, if we go back nine, 1995, this is a pretty hideous uh, beginning. Uh, this this uh, was wired or hot wired, and it actually is showing the first banner ad, uh, which is I know there should be you know kind of a Holocaust museum of, uh, devoted to a advertising on the web, but uh, that was the beginning, and it says have you ever clicked your mouse right here, you will, and that took you to AT and T of all people, so. Uh, what, what's happened is hypertext has caused a kind of jumpiness that people want to, to link from here to there. And, we've, and that engendered the whole social network revolution where we have people giving us links in Facebook or Twitter or wherever to go to. And so people are coming from all directions for all, all reasons and they don't send, tend to stay. Um, so we started, I think, the first big mistake that the media business made was using the radio broadcast or television broadcast model for advertising. So it became a cost per thousand thing to drive the, drive the audience so that you could uh, keep the CPM low and, get, and still make money. And this works if you're, certainly it's working for Google uh, very nicely. And it works at the very high end where you have big audiences, but not so well for smaller publications. Um, so we ended up designing a, a page that kind of optimized page views. And so this is a, I, I hope nobody is here from Business Insider, um, but this may be get, getting close to the worst case example where the, the actual stories have to, uh, you have to click through slideshows to get anything. There's almost no text, there's no continuity. And then there's a lot of, I took that away, but there's a lot of nonsense there too that you don't want to read. There's, um, you know, uh, network content plays with kitty cats and stuff uh, that themselves are their own clickbait traps where you, you get in there and you can't get out or it becomes linked to something else. I mean, it might as well be a porn site. But the, the, uh, this, this whole uh, 12 clicks needed to read, read a, any content, and there were very little content, has been is people becoming accustomed to that, and one of the big issues is once you set a standard and a, and a, a, a kind of uh, pattern, and it's been going on for 20 years, that's a whole generation's t time. Uh, how do you change that? So we're we're in we're in pretty bad shape uh, for this stuff, and I think that the, the whole question of typography and reading are t essentially the same. So what? Do people read anymore? And everybody is saying, oh no, nobody reads anything. There's no, they don't, there's no attention span. It's kind of an ADD worldwide problem. I think that's nonsense. I think that I see more people <laughs> in reading their, their smartphones uh, on the street, some of them like zombies wandering down the sidewalk, somehow, somehow avoiding telephone poles, and, um, and reading or texting. Uh, and so, you know, reading and writing is still a very widely pursued endeavor, and it's a very efficient form of communication. And I always use the example of, uh, of books. You know, we have, uh, uh, Amazon did 1.3 billion in, the, uh, in selling ebooks last year. Uh, that's actually, <laughs> it's a reasonable business. And, and, uh, Somebody is reading all of those. And the, and the Kindle is a very crude object. We'll get to that in a second. 
uh, people have been saying that it, we're post-literate, and that to some degree is true. There's much more video in our lives. There's an enormous amount of video about kitty cats or <laughs> video about two different species of animals who've become friends. But uh, there's other video too, and, we, and there's a million TV channels. Uh, I remember when we thought that 500 TV channels would be a lot, and it seems like not enough. And, the, uh, and then everyone's down, uh, streaming or downloading other, other video. Uh, and video is part of the story, but there, you know, we've had motion pictures also for 100 years. And uh, the, the way that people engage in a, in a, in a good movie, uh, I, you know, from for the, the last Oscar round were amazing movies with Boyhood, and Birdman, those are astounding stories, beautifully told, and people sit in the theater for 90 minutes or two hours and watch them without leaving. Very few people walk out of movies. Why is that? It's a story. They get into the story and they enjoy it. Now, the movies are entertainment, purely entertainment, not just information, but um, so what? It, it's a, the narrative form is, has some good examples in books and movies are them. I did the zombie thing. Uh, so here's a book, and this is what, what I'm sort of talking about as standards or the conventions of design in typography, the way that you go through things. And in a book is, you know, there's, there's no manual for a book. Nobody has ever told a kid how to read a book. They may teach them how to read, but they don't uh, say, okay, put the book carefully in front of you on the table and with the top up and turn the cover to the first page. No, the kids figure that out all by themselves. And, uh, and, and, and they become part of our life. I mean, we've been printing books for 550 years. And it's the simple, at least in, in, in the West, uh, it's, it's simple top to bottom, left to right, and then page to page in a linear way. It's fairly easy. It's a, a river of text. And uh, it goes on and on. And we find ourselves reading hundreds of pages quite pleasurably, quite, quite enjoyably. Even if it's like Capital or, or some other fairly heavy book, you get completely engrossed in it if it's well written. The e-book has just chopped the spread off. So it's the same idea, just one page going down, and then you swipe to pages or click to pages. And the Kindle, you just touch someplace on the right side or you can go back if you, if you miss something. And the nice thing about this is that you get uh, an, a, a sense of where you're going. You have in, in a Kindle, you know how much you've got to, to do. Uh, and you just follow the river. Now, the typography could leave something, it, it leaves something to be desired. The, uh, here's a, a, from an iPad Kindle uh, app, Here's some books that I seem to be carrying around with me. Stalin, that is really 700 pages. I haven't finished that one. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, they, they, they run the jacket and a picture of the title page. And then back to HTML uh, uh, contents page, it's like, what? And then semi-designed inside. My view of the Kindle is that it's no worse than a badly printed uh, paperback. And how many of those have we read, you know? It seems like we've got, now they don't believe in hyphenation, so they get some bad spacing. And you have to kind of play with the, the size setting to get reasonable typography. But it's, there's also a, there's a, you can find in the menu publisher's font. So you can pick the font that, that was intended for the book. Um, so the book is a cool thing. What could we do from the ebook uh, lessons in, 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 for digital publications? And I think it's been five years now or more. Uh, at Microsoft, they came up with something that was originally called News, News Reader. And then the first example was the New York Times Reader. And this was the first responsive publication that I worked on. Uh, this was the, what the Times looked like look like at the beginning, so that the, the window on your desktop would adjust and the layout would adapt to the new viewport. This was partly made for, for different devices, but also made so that um, 
so that you could have a smaller window on a big desktop screen and, and continue with the newspaper. Uh, the, the, the pages, as I remember, the pages scrolled. I don't have any, any pages. But we suddenly realized, now the problem with the, the, uh, the New York Times reader, uh, that it, it was not multi-platform. It was, it, was it was really the idea, you know, 90% of the people have, have PCs, give them something on their PC, but, the, but the, the beginning of the smartphone and the other devices changed that picture, and we, we have m multiple platforms to address now, and different page sizes, the whole idea of covers even suspect. Here's, here's a, a, a project we did for Stern, which was on, uh, on the web for a while, and it, it was completely adaptive, um, fitting, fitting every different kind of device. And this, this different kind of device uh, has been, been a, a challenge for us since then. And, and the, uh, we came up with an HTML solution using JavaScript to, that would paginate. That would re, you would put some uh, algorithm in to give rules about sequence and order, and you could have multiple column pages or smaller pages. Um, as single columns. And we did something called Nomad. This is my project. Uh, and I'll just show you how the, how the same text on an iPad, we would rotate and it would re redraw. And uh, the thing about, no, about TreeSaver is that it would work with any browser. Uh, it was not intended to be an app. Later, they, we, we made a hybrid app with it uh, so that it would run uh, it's still the same way, but we, it, you know you could go through the the uh, app store. But then Adobe came along uh, with a digital replica, which became very easy for magazines and many newspapers have done it too to put a picture of other magazine, bolt on a little video and some stuff, and get you know tear the spreads apart and so you get something like that uh, on separate screens, of course, and then. Um, they would put a, a little menu on there. They still do. Uh, but then if you have an iPad mini, that's really too small to read. So you zoom in. And then where are you? And so it's a completely imperfect solution. The, the reason it, it was so widely ad adopted was that it's cheap. It's, it's a, compared, compared to building an app and then staffing it, and creating content for it, you can more or less go from your basic workflow, run it through InDesign, and then, then they became confounded when they started thinking about iPhones or smaller size screens, because then suddenly you have to design everything by hand. Some people have said the, that, that the, the HTML is still the solution, and the best example, uh, well, actually, I don't know if the, how The Economist has done, the best example for me is Financial Times. I'm using this really just as a layout paradigm. So the, uh, if The Economist, there's, there's the, the paradigm is we, we have a scrolling um, table of context index, and then you can jump to any story, and then you can continue swiping uh, to, to between sto stories. So there are these two modes. One is up and down, which is scrolling, and the other is left to right, which is uh, so either between pages that are paginated or between its scrolling pages. And that's, everyone's kind of used to that now. The Economist is nice because it's still in pages and if you do enough, uh, enough templates, you can get fairly interesting design. And it's very easy to read. So this has become, uh, now the, unpage, the unpaginated version of this looks, is, is just, you go between scrolling pages. And uh, the New York Times becomes the example of that. And here's the New York Times on the iPhone. So you just scroll down, uh, you go to a page, and then when you swipe, you get to the next story. Uh, the, my problem with scrolling is I always lose my place. I scroll, and then I can't go, and if, uh, if I'm just reading very steadily, I can go in the rhythm. And, and people say to me, well, nobody ever reads everything anyway. Don't worry about it. And <laughs> it's like, that's not what we want. <laughs> the, the, uh, anyway, so the, I mean, I think the Times has done a pretty wonderful job. Another thing has happened in the last 
uh, short while, which is what I call the super blog. Or first you get a, a nice blog, like hi. Uh, and it goes on to the end of time uh, on your scroll. And you insert things. This is all in a single column. So it's fairly easy to, to produce. And then, um, you know, then you're, then you're done. It's nice. And this is the user generated content. Uh, some people have flexed this form. Actually, that was just a blog. This is what I call the super blog, where you put in more different kinds of modules. You change the, the padding, you add more pictures. So Vox being the current most interesting example, and we'll hear about that during the main conference. Uh, so there's a, a big index page uh, that just goes. And you click on to get the stories, but this is it's fairly interesting uh, setup, and it and it is it is um, it is responsive. So here's what a story page looks like, and that scrolls, and it scrolls in the same way. It's kind of you know goes on forever, uh, but people at, are seeing evidently reading box. They're getting really good session times of uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Is the last I heard, which uh, by web standards is phenomenal. If you uh, you know most of the the the, the, the sessions that come from the clicks, it could be in the seconds. Here's one that I did for the Font Bureau site uh, about David Burley, who's going to speak soon, and right after lunch. And um, this one has, it's, it's, it's a little more static at some level, but it has different kinds of modules that could be reused for, for other projects. And this is imagining that people like this scrolling thing and don't care about paging. So then the, the most recent kind of distillation of UI in, this, in the publication, digital publication space is Fast Company's new app, uh, which, which has a cover. Uh, oh, actually, it has, it, it, it has three modal views. That is, you can look at the issue, which has a cover, or you can look at it as editor's picks, which has uh, some uh, stack of banners going down, or you can have uh, current news, just the, the whatever is happening in the order it's happening, that, and with with uh, just thumbnail pictures. So uh, it's article based. Uh, the feeling is that it's that that's what people want. They're, they're not in a publication space. They're they're just thinking about one article at a time. Um, so here's what the those three modal views look like. The our picks, latest stories, and then the issue. Uh, and I put up also what the menu looks like when you click that. So it's, you don't get much. You, the, from the hamburger, you just get the, those three things and settings. Um, now, the interesting thing about this uh, is, or one of the interesting things, is it was paid for by Adobe. Adobe has a new product called uh, Publish, Adobe Publish. It's just going to be released this summer. There's a lot of, there's some information on the web and some background of the Fast Company thing, including a pretty good webinar that describes it. And uh, the Fast Company uh, people had you know, worked, worked, worked with Adobe to make something that reflected their magazine. The workflow is really going through the website. It's uh, coming from the, the CMS on the web. And evidently, they're going to be able to take input from InDesign or d direct HTML or from a CMS that's powering templates that have been designed to work with this. But this is essentially an HTML layer. It's, it's going to be, um, it's gonna be uh, available, uh, they say, in, it, as well as iOS, in Android, and Windows Phone. So um, we'll see. I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's really worthwhile. It's free, too, for the next couple of months uh, to download it and, and check it out. Uh, the design is very clever in the index side. They didn't spend as much time on the story side. All the stories look alike. And my feeling is that you just do more templates so you can have an opinion story or a first person read or uh, important feature and do more modules around the pictures and, 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 and add information graphics. But I mean, for, for it's a very interesting beginning. Is it the answer? I don't know. So uh, I'm leaving you with, with a kind of challenge. I mean, I think the thing, this morning I read 
uh, the Washington Post in paper. I get it uh, on my iPad in Hong Kong, but um, it, it was fun to read it in paper. And I'm one of the people, most you know, old paper-bound people who actually doesn't get anything into the mail anymore because uh, I move around too much and it would just stack up and I would forget about it. So almost everything I read is online, but um, I notice that I miss things. If I read the website or if I read the app, I miss things that are, uh, that are pretty interesting uh, that I just don't happen to, uh, to come across. And I don't, there's no page layout. The, the, I do miss pagination. I miss the idea that you know how many pages you've got to go through and you're done at the end. That there are sections and you complete them and you feel good. <laughs> you know, I, I looked at the editorial page, done. In the, in the app, uh, you sometimes don't even know where, where you know, the, the New York Times uh, top news page has got editorials and columns in it. It's like, wait, what's going on? Now, they've made some effort to differentiate the, the, the typography, but I think we could do way more. And it's just a matter of making more templates to make things a little richer and differentiated. Um, one question I had is, why don't we use the browser instead of apps? And uh, has people become, I mean, the app store is impossible to figure out. Why, uh, no one, it's very hard to sell that way. At the same time, uh, everything you know, is being powered by links. Uh, and it goes outside. In, in the iOS world, you can barely link into an app. In, in Android, it's not hard. Um, is scrolling really better than pages? Um, should we, is the real problem the business model, the, the CPM model? And, can, if should we address that either with sponsorship or native advertising uh, and, and paid circulation before we worry about the design? Uh, and how do, we, how do we design as programmers? How do, how do we make an automatically designed page have the same logic and, the, and the sensitivity as an actual design page? I don't think it works, but I think you can get close. I think that, and also we're getting some feedback from the users in a way that we, we could design two individuals in a much, uh, much more real way. We're, we're just starting to explore that, but I think there's an enormous challenge. I don't think there's an enormous amount of time. If we, if we wait another generation before we, we figure out uh, how, uh, how we're going to make an immersive, compelling reading experience on, uh, digitally, the, the habit will perish. And, and we'll, it'll be our own fault. So that's our challenge. So thank you for coming this morning. So uh, eh, Kevin's next, right? It's so tiny on here. Oh, I have to unmic. Oh.